okay, this is going to be Lesson 8 in your student workbook, and Lesson 8 is on page 465. Um, this is going to be uh, the first of two lessons that are now getting into something uh, called function notation. So we're going to be doing something that we've already done, but we're going to be writing it a different way. And sometimes when we introduce um, something new or we write something a different way, it becomes uncomfortable. Um, but the goal is that by the end of this, you're going to understand this new way of writing equations. Uh, so when I say equations, I'm talking about, let's say, uh, y is equal to 4x plus 6, right? That is an equation. And everybody's comfortable with this writing in the form of y is equal to. What we're going to do, though, um, in this lesson is I'm going to teach you how to take this equation notation and write it in what's called function notation. Um, the word notation, it's just um, how we write something in math, right? So equation notation, it's always y is equal to, and then what was the given equation, right? And we're just going to be converting this to function notation. So what I want you to do, there's three types of notation that, um, and this these, uh, the first page will be the notes that will explain these three types of notation. But at the bottom of your page or someplace, I want you to write, um, I'm going to give you examples of these three types of notations. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is the one that you're most familiar with, the only one you've sort of seen to date um, and what everybody is comfortable with. And it's something called equation notation. So equation notation is always written in the form of y is equal to, and then I'll give you an equation. So for example, 2x plus 3. From this, if I said to you, okay, I want your input or your x value to be 5, what would your corresponding output be? You would say, no problem, that's easy. Wherever I see an x, I need to put in the value of 5. So y is equal to 2 times 5 plus 3. y is equal to 2 times 5 is 10 plus 3. Uh, y is equal to 13. So when I have an input of 5, my output is 13, and I could write this or I could represent this um, as an ordered pair. So 5 comma 13, uh, remember it's always x comma y, and your x belongs to the element of your domain and your y belongs to your element of your range. So this, like I said, it's called equation notation. This is what everybody's used to. In the last podcast, which was lesson seven, I introduced you to something called mapping notation. So mapping notation um, is denoted by f colon. And remember that f just tells you that this is a function. So a function, if we were to graph this, it's going to pass that vertical line test, right? For every x value, there's only going to be one corresponding y value. If I input a value of 5 into this function, the only output that will ever spit out is 13, right? This is a function. So mapping notation, how they would show you that they want this done for mapping notation would be x arrow. So remember, x represents our input. And then I'm going to give you the exact same equation, so 2x plus 3. And then what they would say is if they wanted you to map 5, they would say, OK, in your given function, so f colon, they would tell you what they want you to map 5. And then what you need to do is every time you see an x, you're going to input a 5. So 2 times 5 plus 3. My function, when I input 5, would be 10 plus 3. My function, when I input 5, would be 13. So 5 is mapped to 13. So there's my uh, domain, and it maps to 13. This again, represents an ordered pair, and the coordinate would be 5, 13. So what I want you to see is that um, whether we have equation notation or mapping notation, you're going to get the exact same answer. It's just a different way of writing it. Now, in this course, we are not going to do mapping notation. We are going to be doing equation notation, which is what you're comfortable with, 
and this one here, which is called function notation. Okay, now function notation, for whatever reason, this uh, students have the hardest time getting used to this one, but this is the one that I will use almost exclusively only in Math 30-1. I'm no longer going to write y is equal to, and um, I, in Math 20-1, I'd say about 50% of the time I'll do function notation, 50% of the time I would do equation notation. Okay, so what is function notation? Function notation, it's taking the equation y is equal to 2x plus 3, and the only difference, you guys, literally, the only difference between equation notation and function notation is how we write this y value. If we are doing function notation, I take out that y value and I put in f bracket x. How I read this, how do I say this? I say f of x. So that's how I would read this, f of x. So my y gets taken out and f of x goes in and that is equal to 2x plus 3. So a few things about this equation notation. This tells your reader that it's a function, right? So we're dealing with functions. It is going to pass a vertical line test. For every input, there's only one output. For every x value, there's only one y value, okay? And the reason why mathematicians like function notation so much is because what I could then say is I could then say, well, what would f of 5 be? So as you could see, in the bracket, there was an x, and they are saying, well, take out that x, and I want x to be 5. So what they're essentially saying is, um, what calculate my function when x is 5. So we know, here's my x value, take out that x and put in 5. So 2 times 5 plus 3, I'm just going to erase this, f of 5 is equal to 10 plus 3, f of 5 is equal to 13. So again, this is an ordered pair, that is my x value, and my output is my corresponding y value, and that is a coordinate on my Cartesian plane. So whether we do mapping notation, whether we do equation notation or function notation, we get the exact same answer. It's just a different way of writing it, a different way of looking at it. And what this lesson is going to be on is instead of doing equation notation, I'll start with equation notation for every question, but then I'll say, okay, how would this look in function notation? Because uh, by the end of this lesson and by the end of your homework, I just want you to be very comfortable with function notation. So let's flip your page and let's do this first class example. So again, it is written in function notation. So if you need to, rewrite this for a second, and f of x, it's just a fancy way of writing y. y is equal to x squared plus 5. That is my uh, equation written in equation notation, right? This would be equation notation. Function notation is just taking out that y value and putting in f of x. It tells uh, the reader that you are dealing with a function. Now, how I would read this is f of 3, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, well, what was the equation? And it was x squared plus 5. They want me to calculate um, in the bracket, you have to just remember that if it's in a bracket, that is x, right? So this 3 is, they want you to input when x is 3. So you say, okay, no problem. f of 3, when x is 3, wherever I see an x value, I'm going to put in a 3. So 3 squared plus 5. Um, f at 3 is equal to 3 squared is 9 and 9 plus 5 is 14. If they said, well, what would that be as an ordered pair? Ordered pair is always x comma y. So my ordered pair, when x is 3, my output is 14. If we were in class, I would say, okay, everybody, let's do c together, right? So, I, or I would say, I want you to do c. So you would say, okay, f of negative 2. They want me to deal with a function of f 
so that's this one here. Uh, this function is my g function, so it's a different equation, right? Um, if I'm dealing with f, I'm dealing with this function here. So I'm going to write the equation um, x squared plus 5. And then I would say, okay, everybody calculate for me, what is f of negative 2? So you would say, well, normally it's f of x, so that negative 2 is my x value. So f of negative 2, you got to input a negative 2 in a bracket. Whenever you guys take out a variable and you put in a number for that variable, that variable goes in a bracket. So negative 2 squared plus 5. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9. So my ordered pair would be negative 2 comma 9. I want to show you um, the importance I'm going to show you on the calculator of how you would get this answer totally wrong if you don't put this in a bracket. So if I go to your calculator, and everybody could type this in with me, we know that if you replace a number for a variable, the variable goes in the bracket. The number goes in a bracket. So negative 2 squared plus 5 gives me 9. If you typed it in like this, watch what your answer would be. 1. You would get the answer completely wrong if you do not input that negative 2 in a bracket. Okay, so if you're going to take away something else from this lesson, take away that. Okay, um, now if I said, okay, let's do B together. So how I would read B is G of 1, G of 1. So I had two different equations, and this equation here is for my G of X, right? And remember, G of X is the exact same thing as saying, uh, 4 minus x, and they're just taking out the y and they're replacing it with g of x, okay? So the equation for g is this right here, g is equal to 4 minus x, and now what I need to do is they want me to input g of 1, so when x is 1. So g of 1 is equal to 4 minus, and I'm going to put that 1 in a bracket, okay? And 4 minus 1 is 3. So my ordered pair would be, when x is 1, my output was 3. Let's do d together, g of negative 2. So I go to my g function, which is 4 minus x. And now I'm going to put in negative 2, g of negative 2. So again, when x is negative 2, 4 minus, in a bracket, put your x value, negative 2 g of negative 2 is 4. Two negatives make a positive, and 4 plus 2 is 6. So that ordered pair uh, would be negative 2 comma 6. Okay, I'm not going to do e. Uh, that would be more math 20-1. We would do something like that. For now, I just want you very comfortable with inputting one x value. Okay, class example two. Consider the function f defined by, so f of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x, and then they say comma x belongs to the set of real numbers. So don't really worry about this right now. Uh, that's just going to be when we write uh, function notation in domain and range. We'll talk about that later. So again, this is just a fancy way of saying y is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x. But function notation is so nice because they say, okay, we'll calculate what f of negative 3 is, right? So we know that because it's in the brackets, they want negative 3 to be my x. So that negative 3 is x is equal to negative 3. So f of negative 3, I always write my equation first, 5x cubed minus 2x. Then I'm going to say, okay, 5, or sorry, f of negative 3 is equal to 5, put that negative 3 in a bracket, and the cube goes on the outside of the bracket, minus 2, open bracket, negative 3. f at negative 3 is equal to, if you want, let's type this in on our calculators. So on your calculators, if everybody 
uh, could type this in with me. So 5, open bracket, my input is negative 3, so it goes in a bracket, and then I'm going to cube that. So there's your little hat button, and cube it. Scroll out. So 5 times negative 3 cubed minus 2 times negative 3. So when my input is negative 3, the corresponding output, or my range, is negative 129. And that would be my answer. When f is negative 3, y is negative 129. And if I said, well, what would that ordered pair be? When x is negative 3, y is negative 129. Let's do b. The value of f when x is equal to 2. So what is f when x is equal to 2? Well, we're used to writing it like this, right? f of x. So they're saying, okay, they want x to be 2. So that would be f of 2. And what was our equation? Our equation was up here. 5x cubed minus 2x. So they want me to calculate when x is 2. f of 2 is equal to 5, open bracket, 2, close bracket, cubed, minus 2, open bracket, 2, close bracket. So now let's go back to our calculators, and let's do this exact same equation. But let's go and put in a 2. Okay, so do the exact same equation. So 5, when x is 2, so 5 times 2 cubed minus 2 times 2. And when f is 2, f at 2, when x is 2, my corresponding y value is 36. So f at 2 is equal to 36. The image of 7 under f. Um, you, I would never give you a test question like this. The image of 7 under f, basically, that is f of 7. Okay? So pause this. Calculate f of 7 in this equation here. And what you should get, if you type everything in correctly, f of 7 is 1,701. My x value is 7, and my corresponding y value is 17,001. Okay, let's do e, and then we'll even do f. So e, an expression for f of a. So what they're doing is they're saying, take out your x, and every time you see an x, please input an a. So we know that, I'm going to rewrite this equation first, f of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x. They are saying, please take out x and put in an a, so f of a. Every time you see an x, please put in an a. 5, there's an x, they want an a instead. Minus 2, there's an x, they want an a. And you would be done. This last one, okay, let's write our, our function first. So our function and function notation was f of x is equal to 5x cubed minus 2x. Now they're saying, please uh, calculate what f of 2x would be. So f of 2x. So what we need to do, what they're saying, is every time you see an x, please take that x out and put a 2x in. So 5, here's an x. I'm going to take that x out and put a 2x in, and then I need to cube that. Minus 2, here's another x. Take that x out and put a 2x in. Right? So every time I saw the x, I just put in exactly what they told me. They said, put in a 2x. How would we deal with this? So this goes back to your first unit, which was numbers and exponents. And how we would deal with this, f of 2x is equal to, we are going to deal with this first. 
So I have 5 times um, this 3 applies to everything in the bracket. So 2 to the power of 3 is 8, and x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 3, minus, distributing that negative 2, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4x, f of 2x is equal to 5 uh, times 8x cubed is 40x cubed, minus 4x, and we would be done. If we were in class, um, what I would 100% be doing right now is I would say, okay, you need to practice these skills. So what I want you to do, I'm not, I'm not going to make two parts for this video, I'm only going to do one. I want everybody to pause this, and these are the questions that I want you to practice, because the next part of this is going to be something completely different. Um, same idea, function notation, but we're going to be, I'm going to be giving you writing it a different way. So let's stop and do 2, 3a, b, 5, and 6a. So go to your homework and we'll circle that. 2, so 2 should be nice and simple, right? Here's our function, and I want you to input 2, input negative 3, and input 0. Remember these are all my x values. And what would the corresponding y values be? So do number two right now. Then you could do number three, um, A and B only. So again, the, instead of writing f of x, they're just saying g of x. Evaluate when uh, x is four, so put in a four there, and negative six. So g of negative six is equal to six minus that negative 6 has to go in a bracket, and you square it. Evaluate that. g at 4 is 6 minus 4 in a bracket squared. So evaluate those. Um, I'm going to assign 4 and 5 in the next part. Oh, no, I guess I'm assigning 5 now. So it's the same thing, same thing, right? This is x is equal to 5. Plug it in. Don't forget, put it in a bracket. This is x is equal to negative 3. So f at negative 3, if this was my equation, x cubed minus 2x squared minus x minus 5. How would I input negative 3? Every time I see an x, I need to put in negative 3. But that, that negative 3 has to go in a bracket. Minus, there's x, negative 3, minus 5. If students were going to make a mistake, it'd be right here. They would do minus, and then remember, negative 3 goes in there, right, in a bracket. And then 6a. Actually, do 6a, f at 4, and do 6b. 6b would be f at negative 4. And you could even do 6c, f of 0 0.5, don't do E, challenge yourself and try this one, F at 2T. So every time take out your X and put in exactly what's in the brackets, okay? So pause this, do those questions, and then we can come back. Actually, I think what I'll do is I'll stop this recording and I'll do part two.